Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Alex Hoyer. Our next guests are University of Missouri St. Louis student entrepreneurs who have turned great ideas into actionable business plans. Letitia Wexton is a graphic design major, Alex Zwiebelman is a business student, and Tim Bragg is pursuing engineering. And all three of them are taking their entrepreneurial efforts to the next level. Our producer Evie Hemphill started by asking Wexton about the story behind her business concept. She recently won a first prize of $15,000 in UMSL's Entrepreneur Quest Student Accelerator Competition. It's an online platform that she created called Hire Me, which will help people with disabilities level the playing field for finding employment. So Hire Me actually started a good um, four years ago, I think, when I was searching for a job and I was having a really hard time finding one. Uh, with all my job skill set that I had, I really didn't understand why I was going to all these interviews and then being completely shut out. Um, I figured that it was because of my disability as, you know, you can't see me right now, but I don't have arms. And so I think the employers were kind of skeptical about hiring someone without arms, not knowing exactly what my skill set was. So starting my YouTube channel was for a way for me to uh, show my job skills and get the word out there that I am more capable than my disability. And um, I wanted to create the impact that my YouTube channel started out with and um, expand it to a bigger movement and hiring, uh, hire me, making it into a, an online platform to help other people with disabilities, you know, um, showcase their job skills was really where it's, you know, turned into. And then it was my senior thesis project as a graphic designer and then being accepted into the EQ Accelerator program. Just it really exploded really quickly. <laughs> Wonderful. How is Hire Me different than, say, LinkedIn? Hire Me is different than LinkedIn because it is specifically made for people with disabilities. So all the users will have a disability, they'll upload their content, videos, uh, their resumes, and specifically resources associated with their disability. So for me, I would want to show how I drive, I want to show how I use a computer, you know, with my feet, and because I use my feet, I would want a, a chair that sits up just a little bit higher than my desk, which... Um, not a lot of people would know that, but here's a link to that chair in case I do get the job. Um, that employer will be able to buy that chair. So it's it's combining all of the information that employers would want to know about me and my disability into one place. What kind of response have you gotten from you know, employers in the region? I don't know if that went into your research at all as you worked on this project. Are they like eager for a format like this where they can learn more about people with disabilities? I have done a lot of interviews with employment services such as Voc Rehab, Next Step for Life, Goodwill, and they were all uh, really interested in the idea. They're like, there's nothing like this that exists and we really need this in order to, you know, gather up the pool of people that we're trying to get hired. And um, I, uh, after winning the EQ Accelerator uh, first first place, uh, I was approached by several investors who were interested. And <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> they said that, uh, like, we've, we were companies that do hire people with disabilities, and we want to, but we're having a hard time finding them. And there's no, like, one place to do that. And I'm like, well, great, let's, let's work together and, and make it happen so that it'll make it not only easier for you, but for the people who are wanting to get hired. Well, it sounds like you hit on a great idea there. Um, Alex, I understand you got second place in the competition. Congrats. Tell me about the story behind your project. Seize the Bean was kind of created from a student point of view. It was As a student at the university, there was not a lot of amenities in the area, and students were really struggling to connect on campus and finding a way to communicate um, outside of the classroom. So I started looking at the reason behind it and quickly found it was a lack of amenities at the university and lack of really the potential for students to find a common place to meet up because we're largely a commuter campus, students were quickly leaving campus and not really slowing down. So the solution was to find some way to get them to slow down. And we realized that a coffee shop is one of the basic amenities that you'd find at a, at a university. Somewhere for students to go sit down, relax, um, to get a cup of coffee, of course. 
But we want to be more than just that. Anyone could be the next Starbucks as far as a small shop. But we want to be something that kind of focused on commuter campuses, specifically universities that had a large um, non-traditional student, T- typically students that were, you know, commuter, of course, but le- students that had, you know, 26 to 28, that o- older demographic. But what do they want? So we quickly found that, that they wanted a space to break out and meet outside the classroom. They wanted a space that they could um, work on a collaborative project or, or take an executive to meet up with. And, and then also on the same part, the, the, the administrators and the faculty and staff had similar issues. So we c- quickly created the Bean. The concept in, in its entirety is basically just a, a coffee house that allows for interaction, socialization, and collaboration. Can you talk a little bit about the geography of UMSL and the surrounding area? Is Are there a lot of places to eat and gather outside of the campus itself? It's a great question. Right now at the University of Missouri-St. Louis, there's only one place to grab a bite to eat. Unless you like Chinese food, then there's a, there's a fair amount of options up and down Natural Bridge. Ferguson's about two miles down the road, which offers great options. But unfortunately, a lot of the students and even the faculty and staff don't make their way down there. Once they head on the corridor, they're on their way home. So we're quickly learning that even though there are about three options to grab a bite to eat within the, a mile radius, which isn't a lot for any campus, um, students aren't using it. And even Breakaway Cafe, which is a phenomenal restaurant within itself, uh, is just not calling to the students. And there's not really that the, the turnout that they want from the students either. And it's called Seize the Bean? Seize the right? Bean, yes, how'd ma'am. You, how'd you seize upon that idea? <laughs> um, I've always been a carpet DM person. My mother really inspired that on me, and uh, I wanted to call it the Bean or something kind of creative like that. And my mom's like, what about Seize the Bean? I was like, that's a mouthful, but, you know, that's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah. we quickly came to the Bean as the short nickname, but Seize the Bean because it's all about seizing the opportunity, taking advantage of what's in front of you, and, and not just, you know, being idle, but, yeah. you know, being progressive. And Tim, congrats on third place in the campus competition. Tell me about the story behind Singular Construction Automation. So Singular Construction Automation uh, came to me because I, I see a lot of operations uh, from you know the, the labor side. Um, I come from a background where everyone in my family has either been in some blue-collar job, I've worked in blue-collar jobs myself, and I've seen a lot of the frustrations that those individuals deal with, um, you know, a lot of the times bosses want you to get jobs done faster, keep the price at what it is, and there's a lot of difficulty. So we have this, you know, these two individuals butting heads on getting the job faster while getting it done cheaper. So being an engineer, I've always wanted to problem solve, and that's kind of where I just came up with this idea was this was a major problem that I've seen a lot, and I feel like I have the ability to solve it. Awesome. And tell me more about what the problem you're trying to solve is. So singular construction automation, specifically our first product is going to be a asphalt and concrete cleaning robot. And this robot's going to help uh, our, our initial target market, the asphalt sealing industry. And that's because in the asphalt sealing industry, roughly 60% of the labor costs that are associated with each job that they go on is associated with the cleaning of the surfaces that they work on. And the labor costs in total are about one-fourth of the total costs that those companies end up paying for each job that they take on. So this is a significant chunk of where all the costs are for these companies. And the construction industry is pretty frequently looked over whenever uh, new innovation and tech innovation comes around. When I first read about your idea, I just pictured all of the potholes some of us <laughs> <laughs> encounter every day. Right. And it sounds like this could be really useful for that kind of patching. Am I, am I wrong? Yeah, so the first device that we're working on being a cleaner is going to help uh, prep these surfaces in order to be maintained. So the main reason that you do see those potholes, that you see these large cracks in the road, is because over time, uh, as asphalt and concrete deteriorate, they lose their coating that's initially on them. And then water is able to seep in and as you know, the St. Louis weather does, it yeah. heats up, cools down, expands and contracts, and that allows the surfaces to break down very quickly. So without proper maintenance, we end up with roads like what we have in St. Louis. I'm talking with student entrepreneurs Tim Bragg, Alex Zwiebelman, and Letitia Wexton, who are each finalists in the University of Missouri System's first ever Entrepreneur Quest Student Accelerator. It will wrap up at a system-wide competition this Friday in Columbia, Missouri. 
I want to hear from each of you a little bit more about your business concept. And I, I think a layperson like me thinks of an idea as a concept, but a concept is really a lot more than just an idea. Um, let's go back to you, Letitia. How did you bring your idea into a con, like a real full-bodied concept for a business? Um, so I'm a graphic design student, so I wasn't very versed in like the business world. Um, But I did a whole lot of research on marketing, on my target audience, on the businesses around town. Um, And then I focused on how I'm going to make money. So um, it was actually brought up in class that I should be a non-for-profit. And my response to that was, well, just because I'm helping people with disabilities and that I have a disability myself doesn't mean that I have to be a non-for-profit. I can still make money (laughs) while, you know, changing the world. (laughs) So um, just focusing on one step at a time and making sure that I'm meeting all the needs of what a business plan needs and making money and figuring out who my audience is and then... um, also working on how it's going to work Mm -hmm. so being able to let people with disabilities create their own content and share it with the world is really where my mission is is going to be at wonderful how about you alex i definitely have to start with thanking the eq process and and the program is the student accelerator uh in its entirety it allowed me to really take an idea of how do we change the culture of the university to that concept that you mentioned? Um, it's grounded now. They give us resources. They give us mentorships. They, they t- showed us the path, what needs to happen. So it was really through the, the aid of the EQ Student Accelerator that I really learned how to take the concept of that the idea and put it into that full concept, that, that full business model that now I can put in front of any investor and, and, and hopefully get a, a good bite. And that's kind of where we are right now. And uh, it's definitely been a process. But in the, in all in all, it kind of fell into place as you're given those resources. Yeah. Tim, you all, as I understand, have been going through a course throughout mm-hmm. the semester yep. working on these concepts. What did that process look like for you? So I came into the EQ Student Accelerator with this idea that I wanted to just make robots. And I wanted to help these industries that don't really have a lot of these automated processes in them. So. Initially, my first design was going to be an asphalt sealer because I've worked in asphalt sealant. I have people close to me who've worked in asphalt sealant. So I was like, I'm just going to run into this. Being an engineer, there's a problem I see, I'm going to solve it. And whenever I got into the EQ Student Accelerator, I started really being able to look at what the problems are and what's the scope of those issues. And what we found out through a lot of customer research and working with individuals that were targeting with this product, that the ceiling side isn't necessarily the major issue right now. Like I said, the major issue that they're facing is cleaning. So we were like, all right, well, you know, we can make that change. So through the EQ process, you know, we started having the ability to connect with the resources that would help us kind of make that pivot. And that's where we are now is, you know, we're on the way to have a production ready prototype. And I should clarify, um, EQ is the Entrepreneur Quest Student Accelerator Competition at UMSL, correct? Correct. Correct. I I think there's so much pressure from what I see these days on on young people in college, like all of you, to make sure you are ready to find a job right after graduation, pay off those student loans and everything. What was it like for you, Alex, to decide to kind of go a different route here and um, maybe look towards creating your own business? Go, m- than... go more in debt, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it came from the need that I found kind of really in St. Louis as a whole. And, and I, I'm a born and raised in St. Louis person. I love St. Louis, but not a but, period. <laughs> St. Louis is amazing. It just has a lot of silos. And I quickly found that Umsol was kind of a microcosm for that. And students were separated between their university or whatever college of business or college of nursing, whatever they were in, and they weren't interacting. And that didn't make sense to me. I, I spent my freshman year of, of school and college and I quickly um, saw that there's just a huge difference between students that have that traditional sense that wanted to be on campus and the students that wanted to be on campus but were commuters so they're labeled with this title and they um, aren't given the amenities, they aren't given the resources and they're just supposed to be or expected to come to campus and leave. 
And so I, I really wanted to step back and see what was missing. And I, I realized it was, had to do with amenities. As simple as that, just give the students a space. So, so where is that space? Is it, is it a physical space yet, or is it still kind of conceptual? Great question. Uh, we pivoted off our initial location. Um, it was the old Spiros building on Natural Bridge. Beautiful location and still um, working on a lease for that. But we're trying to pivot towards rebuilding and renovating the alumni center at the university, maybe the Chancellor George Alumni House, something like that, um, you know, just to give a little note as he resigns here. But we're looking to actually find a potential um, fundraising for that, and that's now where we are. Um, but we are definitely going to be right next to the university, as close as we can be. Well, Letitia, I want to kind of go back to what I was getting at with, you know, college students and pressure to get a job and get into the workforce. H have you felt that at all? And how, how have you dealt with kind of the inherent risks of being an uh, up-and-coming entrepreneur? So, um, funny enough, my I don't have any student loans. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I was really laid back when it came to uh, my degree. I knew what I wanted to do, which was be a graphic designer. I knew how I was going to do it, and I was motivated. Um, I also think that the job market is so huge right now that millennials, that's the newest thing is – building your own business and being entrepreneurs because if you're not able to find a job and maintain the cost of living then you better find a way and I really think that that's where uh, society is going right now where millennials are just saying I'm going to do it on my own and there are so many right now that are just making their own uh, entrepreneur quests that I, it's it's amazing that we're able to do that. It is. Um, Tim where are things at for your company and your concept? concept? So we're at a, a really good spot. The EQ Student Accelerator uh, was a huge push. We had the ability to connect with our mentor, uh, the CTO of the city, uh, Robert Gaskill Clements, and he has been a tremendous help. Bailey, my co-founder, and I have kind of just been going through this, learning the components along the way, and he's really been able to connect us with individuals who are able to uh, give insight and expertise in those areas that we aren't as skilled in. I understand that on Friday you'll all be competing against other finalists in the Entrepreneur Quest Student Accelerator that the University of Missouri system is running. Is that right? Yeah. What will that process be like? What is pitching when it <laughs> comes to something like this? Uh, Letitia? So on Friday we will, it starts at 8 a.m., <laughs> which is way early for me but that's okay. <laughs> um, we start at eight and we have 10 minutes to pitch our idea. Um, they cut off at 10, they'll boo you off stage. <laughs> and then we have five minutes to answer questions. And so everyone will go, they'll have a break, they'll tally up all of the, the points and they will, um, whoever has like the most, the three uh, most points uh, will pitch again in the same day. Um, and then uh, those three will either win five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollars, and the remainder of us who don't uh, win funds will pitch uh, ninety seconds to kind of uh, re-establish uh, what we're what, what we're trying to do, and then there's a trade show uh, somewhere in between <laughs> <laughs> where we get to like show off what what we've done and how Wonderful. far we've we've moved on. We get very vague details. They say, "Here you go," kind of. <laughs> Will you be pitching, Tim, kind of similar to the competition at, on campus a couple weeks ago? Yeah, the pitch is, you know, it, it, whatever changes that you want to make or what you make. Mm -hmm. uh, and who's, who's judging this, all of this? So the judges for the EQ at UMSL were specifically UMSL picked um, judges. So the UMSL Accelerate picked, you know, some uh, university administrators and some uh, alum through the UMSL system uh, or people who are just entrepreneurs in the St. Louis area. Whereas now, since we're transitioning into this second pitch at Columbia, the judges there are going to be, everybody's going to have the opportunity to pick from each university. So UMSL is sending a few people that they believe are going to be good judges, and uh, the other three universities will be doing the same thing. Each one of those judges also, as a requirement for this final pitch, has to be completely unaware of, of these companies. Mm -hmm. So they do not know me, Alex. They don't know the people who are coming from Rala, Colombia. I guess that makes sense. There's kind of a lot of money at stake. <laughs> yeah, so all these people have this these 10 minutes that we pitch to get a full understanding of what our 
company is. So it sounds like there's been a lot of support on the campus and UM system level for student entrepreneurship and all of that. Are you also finding a lot of resources right here in St. Louis, Alex, as you think about how to um, monetize and grow your idea? Absolutely. The university's definitely put our foot on the door with a couple of resources, directly affiliated with the university. Um, but I'm a networker. Venture Cafe is my, my thing. I love going to places that I get to shake hands and meet people. And the St. Louis community as a whole is really receptive to positive change for the area. And when you talk to people about North County and you talk about you know certain areas that need to be renovated or updated, they're like, yeah, I understand that. And, and then they actually find a cause and they can get behind it. And it's not just, not just a conversation anymore. People say, how can I help? Um, anywhere from graphic arts designers to, you know, just uh, I've had a couple of social entrepreneurs come my way and say, how can I help uh, with this venture? Because it's something that's supposed to positively affect the change of culture or possibly change culture in those in the, in the area. And it's just the unit, the St. Louis universe, St. Louis just has so much love to give. And I think that there's just been a lot of a lot of open hands for that as well. You found that too, Tim? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I mentioned, my mentor being the Robert from the city, he's has an immense amount of connections throughout the city. And he's had the ability to put us in contact with numerous contacts to help excel our venture. Specifically, we are, we have an actual office space at T-Rex. And at T-Rex, we have the ability to network with all of these other uh, ventures that are either in similar stages as us or potentially a little further along And then another contact that we have is we were accepted into I-10, which is a um, catalyst. So it's very Mm -hmm. similar to an accelerator, just, you know, lots of networking, being able to put you in contact with venture capitalists or other people who might be able to give you a few tips and tricks. That's great. Letitia, do you have any advice for people that might be interested in getting involved in the startup scene and in entrepreneurship here, but maybe feel a little overwhelmed by it all? Um, my advice would be just to go for it and network as much as possible. St. Louis is a great place, as you know, um, Alex has said. <laughs> uh, it's a great place to network with people, and everyone is just so helpful. So if you have an idea and you want to do something with it, just go for it, and there's a way to make it happen. Seize your opportunity. <laughs> Have you grown in terms of just overall confidence personally, Alex, through this and seeing that you can dream something up and really build it and make it happen? Unbelievably. Uh, The forced hand that you have to go and talk to people yourself, like, okay, I'll I'll, I'll lead you to as close to the wire as I can, but you now need to go and actually sit there and call someone or talk to them and and, and not be so nervous was something that I had to quickly learn. it definitely builds a lot of confidence, and I, I'm, I'm able to pick up the phone and call anyone now, and, and anywhere from you know, the Attorney General, who I've had the privilege to meet a couple about last week, and, and just university, from the Chancellor to you know, other man administrators at the university, it's really given me the avenue to just to have that confidence to feel comfortable to go to talk to people and realize they're just, they're, they're just other people that just want to talk to you, and, and they are interested, as long as you're not asking for money, they want to listen, <laughs> you know, so, um, but there, there's actually a lot of great people, and there's just, yeah, absolutely, a lot, of, a lot of confidence that's just come from this process. Tim, how would you say you've grown through all of this? Uh, being an engineer, I mean, I come from a background of really liking looking at numbers and uh, just dealing with the things that I have to deal with, so taking on the, you know, challenge that it is to be a entrepreneur and actually start pushing myself to reach outside of my scope was a little weird at first. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with entrepreneurship in a slight amount before. I had my own personal training business. Um, my co-founder, Bailey Worsing, was in the Amron Accelerator in St. Louis. So, you know, we've, we've both had a little, a little hint of, of entrepreneurship, but we haven't really had the point to get to where we are now. And I think that we've grown a lot. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm working with finances and client relations and our manufacturing connections. Uh, you know, Bailey has moved more into the business side of things. Uh, so we've both just been able to expand our skills and become better. That was UMSL student entrepreneur Tim Bragg, along with Alex Zwiebelman and Letitia Wexton, talking with St. Louis on the Air producer Evie Hemphill. The students are headed to Columbia, Missouri later this week to compete for cash prizes against other UM System Student Accelerator finalists. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU.
Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.